after migrating more than 100 plus websites from WordPress to Webflow. We've noticed that there might be a shift coming to the industry. At its peak, WordPress had more than 65% of the CMS market share. And if you look at the data, in January 2024, it slowly started to decline. We've seen tech giants fail. Blockbuster did to Netflix. You might be thinking, is WordPress next? And should you consider moving to Webflow? Let's find out. I've personally used WordPress in 2014 and also I'm currently running one of the biggest Webflow shops out there called Flow Ninja. So I've been in both shoes and hopefully with my experience I'll be able to provide you with the informative decision on should you choose WordPress or should you choose Webflow. And everything I'll be discussing today is coming from a professional website example. I mean if you have a smaller website whether you choose WordPress or Webflow both are probably gonna be fine. But when when we come to larger websites, more professional websites, enterprise websites, that's where the difference between these two platforms really starts to build up. Let's dive into the story behind both of the platforms. In order to understand the main differences between them, I think it's important to figure out how they started out. Matt Mullenweg, the founder of WordPress, saw potential in a platform called B2 Cafelog. And in 2003, he transitioned from B2 Cafelog over to WordPress. The new platform quickly became a pretty big hit. It transitioned from a blogging tool all the way to a really complex website builder. And probably the main reason behind that was its open source nature. WordPress leveraged open source in order to go ahead and grow the community and to have everybody contribute to the product in order to make WordPress bigger and better with time. On the other side, the idea behind Webflow started in a similar time frame. I mean, Vlad Magdalene, the founder of, of Webflow, actually tried many different times to start Webflow, but he didn't give up. He had attempts in 2004, 2006, 2007, 2012, and finally in 2013, Webflow was founded. And this is where the main difference between these two platforms comes in. Where WordPress was created as a blogging tool and it evolved into a complete website builder in the end, Webflow was founded at its core to be the next visual development platform. And on the other side, in order to make something like that and to make something as complex as the new way to develop things visually for anything, not just blogs, Webflow became a closed source platform and all of the developments are being contributed by Webflow itself. When it comes to Webflow market share, one thing they do really, really well is they take over the market share at the top 10% of companies. I mean, they might not have a great market share like WordPress has. I mean, like currently WordPress is a 63% like at its decline. But when you look at the top 10K websites with the most amount of traffic in the world, Webflow has 2% of the market share in that case. So because it's a professional tool and it's a tool that allows visual development, it was able to slowly start eating away into WordPress in places where it matters the most and in places where the websites are really, really complex. Now that we know company's history, let's dive into the differences. Whenever I get on a sales call with clients, the main difference I showcase to them is that WordPress is like Android and Webflow is like Apple. I mean, if we compare Android to Apple, we're gonna see huge differences in the way their software and their like operating platform has been built. And is the same in our case for WordPress and Webflow. In the CMS case, WordPress is like Android. It's gonna allow you to add that much more flexibility to change anything you want to at the core of the platform, but in the process, you might break the code base or create some errors. For Webflow, it's gonna be more like Apple. It's gonna make sure that you cannot mess around with everything in Webflow, but on the other side, it's gonna make sure that your website is as reliable as possible so that it's gonna be easy for you to use it and for your customers to be able to view it at every single point. After comparing Apple versus Android, let's dive into the real differences. Development of new features. The reason I gave up WordPress in 2015 and switched over to Webflow was exactly this point. As an open source platform, doing anything advanced in WordPress required me either finding a proper plugin or developing in PHP. And that's fine. But personally for me at the time, I didn't know PHP and I guess I didn't have the best of luck when I chose plugins. Just because everybody can contribute and create a WordPress plugin, whenever I needed something really specific, I somehow managed to get a 
wrong plugin which stops being updated and stops working after some times. For an example, if I created a pop-up, I needed a plugin. If I created forms, I needed a plugin. If I just wanted to build anything in, in WordPress, I needed to get Elementor or whatever. So it seems like the platform itself is not as capable out of the box. And when I transitioned to Webflow, that's where I was really amazed. It seemed like Webflow was WordPress on steroids. And I mean like not in terms of muscles, but in terms of what can I do on the platform without actually adding any third party tools. I mean like developing pop-ups, developing forms and like anything of that matter was really, really easy. And it made the process of transitioning clients from WordPress and like an ecosystem of like 20 plugins over to a single platform that much easier. In WordPress, you use plugins a lot and plugins can break. So whenever you open a WordPress dashboard, there's always a plugin to update, to be updated. So this is always updating. There's always a new version of WordPress. It's open source. It's on PHP. A lot of stuff can break. And if you have like 40 plugins, if just one of them breaks, then your entire site can go to hell. In Webflow, it's almost never the case because you have one package for all, you don't have plugins. You just basically build, write a clean code using visual toolkit and you just add custom scripts on top. So you don't have to rely on other people work implementing plugins. Uh, you just rely on yourself. The entire infrastructure is built the way that nothing can break. And I sleep so much better having around 100 pages on our account, I think, built for clients already on Webflow. In WordPress, well, I had so many stories that clients were calling me because I was doing WordPress as a when I was starting. I had clients calling me that the website is down because some plugin that was created by someone three years ago that I used is not being updated anymore. And now the entire site is breaking. Performance. Every single request for proposal we get at our studio usually states that the website should load in two seconds or less. And that's possible to do both on WordPress and on Webflow. Don't get me wrong. The process of getting there is a little bit different. If you want to do it on WordPress, you're probably going to need to start thinking about, okay, where I'm going to host this? Who's going to be my CDN? Am I going to get a hosting that has a global CDN? How am I going to deploy my WordPress instance to there like in the best way so that I make sure that it's fast? I need to update the WordPress every single time when there's a new core update. When I do that, I need to make sure that the plugins uh, are also compatible with the next WordPress update. And the list is going to go on and on and on and on of the things you need to check. I mean, like additionally, of course, optimizing images. Then additionally on WordPress, you have clearing cache and clearing many different things. So it becomes more of a maintenance instead of just running the website. If you want a WordPress website to be fast, you're probably going to need to do some sort of maintenance every two to three months or so. On the Webflow side, it's going to look a little bit similar, but with a lot less steps. You're just going to need to worry about uploading the proper images, which are going to be compressed, developing in the proper way so like that you don't bloat your website with CSS and that you use some something to reduce the scripts you're adding to the website in terms of Google Tag Manager or maybe if you want to go overkill, go ahead and use Segment. As Webflow is going to handle hosting and deployment, you're not going to worry about any of the other things and the best thing ever is if you build a Webflow website today, you can leave it for like two years, it's still going to be up and running and it's not going to get any slower than it was on the first day. Maintenance. WordPress is going to require you to either know WordPress on your own really, really well, or to have an expert who's going to be maintaining the website. You're never going to know is the plugin becoming outdated? Should you update it? Should you update your WordPress instance? Should you update Elementor? How's that all going to affect like every single one of the items? And in the process, it can create a real mess out of the website. I know a few friends who kind of ran their websites and forgot about them for two years. And right now they're scared to touch anything on them because if they update WordPress, they don't know what's going to happen and like what's going to on the other side, Webflow is going to guarantee you 99% uptime with zero maintenance. I mean, like we do have ongoing plans and packages and retainers with our clients at our studio, but that's more to build new things. I feel like we're never maintaining the status quo that's done by Webflow and like by the marketing teams. And we're there as our technical partners, always building new things, testing new things and building new complex items. In the same time, you might waste uh, your budget on maintenance, whereas on Webflow, you're going to be able to utilize that budget for something new to be done on your website. Plugins. 
both platforms have an incredible plugin marketplace. In this case, WordPress is gonna have its edge. If you really wanna go deep into plugins, because WordPress is open source, you're gonna have probably tens of thousands of different plugins to go ahead and implement into your website. And as it's been out since 2003, there have been more developers like and more users actually creating the plugins themselves. So if this is an important part for you, choosing WordPress might be uh, like a smarter choice for you. It's gonna come with like with some of the downsides that I mentioned, but it's a clear winner in this case. Webflow on the other side has a marketplace which is more closed and gated like Apple is. I mean, personally, we've launched Datagoat, our analytics plugin on like the Webflow marketplace, and we know how hard it's first to get in to kind of be able to get to publish the plugin itself. Webflow is gonna review everything really, really in depth whenever you kind of go in and update the plugin. And on the other side, it's also gonna do reviews of every single new development that you update to the plugin itself to make sure that the code base is good and that you won't harm the users who are gonna be using the plugin itself. So just because of that really strict process of creating new things on Webflow, it's gonna have a lot less plugins, but hopefully with time, that's gonna grow. Native SEO functionality. For any professional websites, you're usually gonna be getting a lot of traffic from SEO and setting that up in the proper way is probably gonna be the thing that makes or breaks your website. On both platforms, you can have incredible SEO results. In the case of WordPress, you're just not gonna have that much flexibility out of the box. If you go ahead to WordPress, you're gonna need to install probably Yoast SEO, which with time might add some additional costs of like a hundred bucks per year if you wanna go with a professional kind of Yoast SEO plugin itself. On the other hand, Webflow is gonna give you all of the SEO functionality functionalities straight out of the box for you to go ahead and make updates and SEO adjustments directly into the platform itself. One of the things we've noticed is like when we transition clients over to Webflow that they increase their SEO traffic by 10 or 20% and you don't have to hear our word for it. You can go ahead to the Webflow customer success stories and figure out who are the companies who actually had those results. Content management. Content management can be a lot more than blogs. WordPress, in this case, because it started out as a blogging platform, is gonna allow you to have much more flexibility in the rich text element. It's gonna have more items, like, I don't know, Webflow doesn't have, I mean, like, Webflow doesn't support tables at this moment. You might see some small quirks when you compare WordPress to Webflow, and maybe some simple things not being able to be done in an easy way on, like, the Webflow rich text editor. But on the other side, if you wanna go and expand beyond just blogs, Webflow is gonna have a, a little bit of an edge here. WordPress UI is so old and it's on PHP and everything is different that when you're coming into Webflow CMS, you are just amazed. By not only the UI, but the ease of building the, the CMS backend by connecting it on the front end, it's super easy and indeed intuitive to, to grasp. So yeah, it's much easier in Webflow. In order to create complex content management systems in WordPress, you're probably gonna require to use one of the several plugins which allow you to go ahead and create that. And the UI is not gonna be the best and the most easy one to understand when you start building it up. Whereas on Webflow, for example, if we take a look at one of our clients, Upwork, they were able to leverage the Webflow content management system to create landing pages, to create success stories, and to expand their collections a lot further than just blogs. You can go ahead and visit, for example, upwork.com slash cat slash dev IT to go ahead and visit one of the examples of how you can leverage the Webflow CMS to go ahead and expand your website. Security and support. Being an open source platform, WordPress is gonna require a little bit more things to be done properly in order to make sure that the website is secure. If you have smaller builds, as I said at one point in the video, you're probably gonna be fine. But if you move to the professional website design and development and like implementation, you're gonna need to identify the hosting providers to add additional plugins to add two-factor authentication to WordPress, or maybe even to switch to the WordPress VIP in order to get priority support and to get additional SLAs. I still have some WordPress sites running for my old clients and I kind of worry about them from time to time because you know, you need to take care of the hosting, pay the bills for the servers in different spots because you wanted to save some money. You have this login attempts on, you know, your domain slash VP admin pages. You have hackers, you have plugins going bad. It's a hassle. When you have a lot of websites on WordPress, you just can't sleep at night. I don't know how people do it. On the other side, with Webflow, you're gonna get support even on the business plan. Because it's a closed platform, they're gonna be providing you support even if you're not on the enterprise plan. And because they handle deployment and everything, you're not gonna have any security concerns 
of somebody actually hijacking your website and doing some funny stuff with it. And then additionally, whenever Webflow gets an update, it's gonna update the whole platform for all of the users and also all of the plugins. So you're not gonna be worried about is this new Webflow update gonna mess up anything on my website currently. And to wrap everything all up, is WordPress facing the same destiny as Blockbuster did to Netflix? Personally, I don't think so. But I do believe that Webflow is gonna take a lot of market share from WordPress when it comes to those top 10k websites. On the other side, WordPress is probably gonna be there for a while. Being an open source platform is gonna allow many smaller businesses to go ahead and adjust the platform that much more and play around if they know what they're doing on that front. If you want to see our nine strategies that we use for every single one of the clients we transition over to Webflow, Flow, you can go ahead and watch a free webinar here and learn a lot more about our processes for Fortune 5000 companies.